what? isn't that isn't that the Saturday morning cartoon they're they're making? What? Baby what? baby Jason and, and, and Warm Freddy. Let's Saturday. do it. I can see Let's that. Play and we'll throw we'll throw in a baby sandworm from Beetlejuice and the dream people from Freddy's Dead. Yeah. It'll be perfect. Like Muppet Babies just be horror babies. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, slasher <laughs> babies. Yeah. Totally there. Oh my god. That there was actually work. a there was a funny video I saw on YouTube Martin a while back. Network. This woman, she she works at a daycare, but she's taking care of all the horror kids, like Damien, the girl from The Ring. Uh, there, there's all these like, or she's reading them, like story time, but she's reading from the Necronomicon. She she like has to deal with all these kids that are just the evil kids. Put it on Adult Swim. I think it would actually get good ratings. You know, uh, go all in on the whole Muppet Baby angle. You know, all in on it. And but make it the slasher babies and put it on Adult Swim. I think it would. I think it would get good ratings. You know, yeah. honestly. I, I created a uh, an animated series, just the pilot. It never went anywhere, but called Call of Kathy Lou, and it was <laughs> it was all of 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 Lovecraft's old ones. Yeah. They wake up one day and they're in a baby's playpen. They're all stuffed animals in, the, in a baby's playpen. Oh, that's interesting. And the whole idea was they, they need to escape the playpen to, to destroy humanity. Yeah. But, but the two-year-old in the playpen is worse than they are. And the whole yeah. thing is about that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That would, that would, be, that would be fun. <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised I'm how many people don't. Crap, though. I'm surprised how many people don't know H.P. Lovecraft. When I talk about Cthulhu, H.P. Lovecraft, I, I get so many blank stares. And I, I guess it's just really popular in the horror world, but not as popular in other um, genres. Another thing that's sad is there's not as many young people that are into uh, Edgar Allan Poe as there was whenever I was growing up. Yeah. Right. You know, I've gotten a lot of blank stares on Poe. I think that's worse because, I mean, we even had – that's not awesome, but even Color Out of Space was made recently. When's when's the last Poe adaptation? Ooh, ooh, I, I know that. Um, Jeffrey Combs, the reanimator, he yeah. is Poe now. He he did it for a movie, and now he's a traveling. He's doing it for traveling theater. Oh. He does a fantastic version of Poe, and I feel like he's kind of reinvigorating some of that fan base. I'm gonna narrate a Poe work every Halloween. I started right. with Telltale Heart. In 2019, uh, Poe is, po is what got me into really wanting to read whenever I was about 10 years old and uh, really got me into poetry and into books, into short stories and really horror. Like, I was scared of, uh, like, my daughter, four years old, she was asking to mall Santa Claus for Chucky movies. Uh, as a kid, I was scared. I was scared. Yeah, that mall Santa turned so red, man. And there was people giving me go to hell looks. The <laughs> other parents. Did somebody call child services? <laughs> no, if that doctor from uh, New Nightmare had been there, she would have. Um, oh. But no, they they looked at me like I was the worst parent on earth, and I was like, "Tell Daddy to put that in the letter to Santa. Don't tell Santa." <laughs> <laughs> um, but y'all were. I was. I was, My point is, I, I was scared of this stuff until I was about ten. Poe was really my introduction into horror that really got me into it. Uh, so it's sad that he's becoming so obscure, and uh, it's just sad for me. I'm like about to cry over here. It's so sad. Um, yeah. But you were, you mentioned Scream earlier, and I wanted to bring this up to y'all because I have two rules for a Scream Five. Uh, one of two things has to happen, or I don't care to see the movie. And really, Scream 4 shouldn't have happened without this happening. We talked about this on the podcast. Yeah, uh, I think we did a whole before. after show rewriting the ending for the Scream franchise. Yeah, I want to run it by David. Okay, one, the first thing that would be good that needs... It's either, it's either or. Uh, either one of the main three characters needs to die before the opening credits... You know, like in the Drew Barrymore scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so either Dewey, Gale, or Sydney needs to be the one that dies at the beginning of the movie. If they can't do that, then I think at the end of the movie, the re the revelation ends up being that Sydney is the killer. And I have a lot of people saying, she's such a survivor, though. that It can't be that. And I'm like, hold on. I'm going to tie it all back to the first movie. Randy with his rules, okay? 
after all this stuff that Sydney's gone through, she's finally snapped and thinks that she's in a horror movie. You know, what's what other explanation is there? Me and Sean put this together, and I think Jeffrey was on that night. Uh, and, like, her psyche has been so damaged by this that she's, like, seeing Randy's rules, and she thinks she's in a horror movie, and the only way to get out of it, she thinks she's in a horror franchise. The only way to get out of it is to kill everybody. You know, kill off all the characters, and there can't be no more movies. No more, no more st killers coming after her. No more death of people she knows. If she just wipes out all the characters, and uh, so at the end, whenever she like takes the mask off, and you know, she's got like the knife up here, and she's like explaining, you know, and she, you're seeing her slip into insanity, and she starts spouting off Randy's rules and stuff. Uh, but if, if she's not the killer, what is the point of another screen movie? You know. Story wise, how many people can she know that want to kill her? Her landlord. I don't know. You want you want to go crazy with it? Gail helps her kill people because Gail needs to revamp her uh, career for before she gets too old or something. You know, and that's actually a horror book I just her. read. What is it? I've just read a horror book where it turns out that the killer of the children was the reporter who was always first on the scene. Oh, that was uh, the new Stephen King book. Yeah, I just finished that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, um, yeah, I just finished that a couple weeks ago myself. Spoilers! Spoilers! <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. I, I see, couldn't I, see it. I was that, that was good. Good I news. love Stephen King, I but I cannot read Stephen King. I have to listen to it. Yeah, um, I actually like the narrator who did the narrations, because If It Bleeds is the latest book, and it's it's four short stories read by different people, but If It Bleeds is the longest short story, and it's Holly Gibney, who is the character from The Outsider, from the Bill Hodges trilogy Stephen King wrote. This is her taking on a new case of maybe another outsider situation, um, I, I just finished it yesterday. It was really good. I love his anthology stuff. That's on my list to listen to. I, I just can't. I got to the point where when I picked up a Stephen King book, David, mm -hmm. I would just fall asleep reading it. But because, like, I love his stories and his, and his imagination. I love hearing his audio books. But, like, he'll spend four pages talking about how a crack on the ceiling reminds a guy of growing up on his father's goat farm. <laughs> In the 60s, in dairy. Hysterical you know. and fairly accurate. Yeah. Uh, I think he's gotten better. there. I think he had this middle period, like around Insomnia, where like the story for Insomnia doesn't start for like 150 pages. And I, I like the book, but, you know, somewhere between The Stand and that, he just way overwrote and no one would edit him. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that's great about like the Bill Hodges trilogy and some of the more recent stuff is it's very spare. It's okay. very character driven. It feels to me that it has it suffers less from that than some of his earlier work, like up through even Duma Key or, or, or stuff like that. Um, my yeah. only my only downside of the, some of the recent stuff is I I feel like he really loves the Holly Gidney character and this outsider concept, and he keeps writing the same book from a different angle, like, right. three times. Um, it's actually interesting that you mentioned Insomnia. I was going to mention Insomnia in our podcast, but I felt like I would detract from the conversation with a Stephen King thing, maybe save it for after the slash. In Insomnia, have, have, have you both read that? I have. Okay, you know how he, he was having Insomnia, and he, he couldn't figure out how to fix it, and you find out that the fates actually did it to him over the course of months and months so they could adjust him to see the things that are a bit supernatural. Like They couldn't just delve him into it. That reminded me of Heather Lanningkamp in this book. They couldn't just up and put Freddy there. They had to leave the... They had to basically tread her in the shallows before they got her into the deep end, and that's what they did to Ralph in Insomnia. So I felt like these two concepts were actually kind of parallel to each other in, in that aspect. You know, I thought of insomnia during our conversation too, but for a different scene. Huh. When when we were talking about the the um, the babysitter scene and how right. how Freddie came out of Dylan, sort of 
I was thinking of remember the balloons. Yeah. I was thinking of Freddy in a in a shadow umbilical cord attached to uh, attached to um, uh, Dylan, and then you know, kind of floating out in the world doing all of this stuff. Right. And that oh reminds- wow! Like he's yeah, like he's literally space like a space guy, you know, on a, on the end of a tether. I'm just kind of thinking like Crimson King versus. Uh, I think it was Dream Dealers when Freddy is, has the cloak and he's going to be a king. And he's like, guess I don't get to be a king after all. And he's just like angry. But I could just see Freddy as like the Crimson King kind of thing, like in, in the shadows because Freddy was... Or-